high drama, you know, the whole time. Um, but then as I got older, I mean, Batman is a character who really matured with me, and the first comic book that really just transformed my world was Dark Knight Returns in 1986. That, that was sort of the first instance um, for me as a, as a reader and also as a kind of somebody who knew he wanted to go into storytelling. The first book that was so transformative in the fact that Batman looked like he was walking the streets that were an extension of New York, even though it was a futuristic book, the problems you knew, as a child even, were here, like you're not allowed to go to Times Square, you can't go to Central Park, the mutants, all of that stuff that's kind of metaphorical or, or, or you know, transformed into kind of a sci-fi version of the real elements, those things made Batman immediate and, and realistic to me, and, and, and the Cold War aspects, all of it made him relevant, and, and I had never seen anything like that, and also just the psychological depth of that book just blew my mind. I mean, I was way too young to read it. I still, I remember my dad kind of looking over my shoulder, you know, when you see the, some of the characters and all that stuff. But I still have my original four issues in my parents' house. So that, that was really the one for me that was sort of the big touchstone. What about you, Jim? Yeah, um, I'm going to be really boring, and I have the exact same answers, actually. Um, but I was a lot older when I read The Dark Knight Returns, and I completely got it. Um, but. Uh, but I was also much older when I watched the Batman TV show, and I still thought it was high drama. So that just goes to show you where my emotional uh, depth is at. But uh, and I just remember the TV show. I just realized recently that uh, Cesar Romero, he he's wearing a mustache underneath the makeup, and I could never understand why it creeped me out so much as a kid. But now I finally get it. But uh, no, I was just really into all that stuff. Uh, you know, comic books was uh, you know we moved to the United States when I was a little kid. I didn't speak any English, and so I really learned to read from comic books. Uh, but being able to watch a TV show was a lot easier than reading, per se. Uh, so the TV show was huge, Dark Knight Returns was huge. Um, but I think just the origin of Batman was something that really got, got me into comics because he was just a guy that studied hard, worked out a lot, felt like, hey, I could do that, you could do that, we could all be Batman. I remember there's like, in the origin story, there's like a, sh a shot of the periodic table behind him, and that got me interested in what that was and the chemistry. and. When I redrew the uh, origin of Batman and Batman Hush, I made sure to kind of drop that in there, and, and it was like lifting, and so it was just like a kind of cool inspirational thing that got me not just in comedy, but just you know trying to learn about things beyond you know, uh, what they were teaching you in grade school. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think both of you got to a, what I think is one of the most important points about Batman, which is that he is not just timeless, but he, but he ages with us in a way. You know, like he like he's you can totally appreciate. Uh, individual books as a kid, as an adult, um, the TV show is a great example. But what do you think it is about the Batman character that makes him so relatable both to uh, to kids and, and, and adults? Well, I think it's his humanity. I mean, he, he, he's a guy who suffers as a child probably the worst trauma a kid can suffer. This random act of violence takes his parents, and instead of sort of buckling under that, he uses it as fuel to transform himself into this pinnacle of human achievement. He basically goes out there and says, if I can do this and make sure this doesn't happen to anybody else, what happened to me as a child, you can go out and sort of overcome any fears that you have about yourself. And I think ultimately all the other stuff, the wealth and the gadgets, that's fun and it's sexy and it's really fun to write. You know, like the new Batmobile this. But at its core, I think that's, that's what makes him so enduringly inspirational and, and appealing is that he's just one of us and he says to anybody that you know, engages with him or, uh, as a reader, you can do what you think you can't do. And that lesson is just timeless, you know. I, that's, that's, it's what, what, what makes him endlessly interesting also as a writer, I think, you know, that you feel it as you're writing, he's sort of always saying, throw me any challenge because I'll overcome it the way, you know, you guys can as well when, when you feel like there's no way out of a, of a bad situation. Jim? Yeah, I also think there's a bit of wish fulfillment in uh, Batman. I remember reading like Dark Knight Returns. It was like the first time I'd seen a hero holding, you know, a thug over the, <laughs> the edge of the building, about to drop him to get him to kind of confess. And I was like, that's pure wish fulfillment. I remember when that book came out, the '80s and Bernard Getz, and just this whole, you know, feeling of helplessness. I think about people living in cities, like how do we combat urban crime? And here was this mythical figure coming out from the shadows, kind of solving all our problems even though he was this vigilante. And then, you know, Frank even addressed that within the story, using Superman as the ultimate sort of uh, lapdog for the government. So um, I think there's a, that, that, he works on a couple of thematic levels. He is this very noble hero born of tragic circumstances, but he's also a character that really has no, com, you know, 
compunctions are, he, he has no reservation about throwing a, a villain through, you know, a window of a building or through the, you know, whatever. So uh, he, he is that definitely out there on the edge, which I think makes him a very compelling character in that he's not this Boy Scout that's out there fighting crime. He's very much, he's maybe one or two thoughts away from actually kind of being, you know, a bad guy, you know. Uh, so in a way, he's, he's very much, uh, not just the flip side of a coin, but very much almost on the same side on the rim, looking over the abyss at all this, uh, you know, all this evil and crime. So I think in that level, he's just very, very unique and interesting.